So I've been using a MacBook for the past one week. As a Windows user, what do I think about using a MacBook for my work needs and my everyday needs? So I'm going to give you my opinion starting right now. Hey guys, I'm Zan here. Welcome back to this channel. So if you're new to this channel, we provide a lot of PC tech guides, PC part comparisons, PC builds for gaming and for workstation in a very cool and a very interesting way. So I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and also I'd like to ask you to like my two pages and my social media. A bit of backstory, I'm not totally new to using a uh, MacBook back in my previous company. The majority of my colleagues are using a MacBook and there'll probably only be one or two users, including I, who are using a Microsoft laptop which is the Microsoft Surface 2. I have a bit of a feel on a MacBook while trying to navigate around and just trying to find out the things that I need. But this is my first full foray into using a MacBook into using Mac OS. I also don't own an iPhone. I've been using Android all this time. So yeah, this is my first true Apple device. So I'm currently using the new MacBook Air 13 inch. Comes with a 13.3 inch retina display at 2560 by 1600 pixels, 1.6 gigahertz dual core i5, 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, 128 gigs of PCIe SSD, Intel UHD graphics 657, two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the left hand side, and one 3.5 mm port on the right hand side. And it has a webcam for FaceTime. So, first things first, I talk about the new quality. So, of course, coming from very impressive things that I hear everyone saying, when back to so nice, feels so good. Yeah, it does slip up to his name. It feels very good, very well furnished. Although it's quite a big magnet for fingerprints, so I always make sure that I always use a use a cloth to clean the MacBook keyboard as well as the MacBook itself. But before closing it, not there will be a lot of fingerprints because I tend to sweat easily. There will be a lot of fingerprints, there will be a lot of runoff. Just to make sure that there will be no moisture left. If not, the paint job on the MacBook will run. So make sure that if you have certain things, I make sure to clean it first before closing it. So you probably won't get such a nice design, such a nice finish on Windows laptops. I could be wrong because. This is my first laptop in a long time. So maybe these days we know laptops feel much, much better. I don't know. Talk about the main screen, which is the retina display. Wow, it just feels amazing when you come in from a regular Windows display, which is just probably a typical maybe a 1080p or 2K monitor. This is retina screen. So everything just feels very bright, colors feels very clear, very nice, very crisp. Although sometimes because it's retina, if you're probably working on the light, there'll be a lot of uh, reflection. So just make sure that they're not working down. Really so yeah, next on going to the keyboard. Yeah, it's called the butterfly keyboard. It's a very interesting hybrid of a mechanical keyboard and a typical keyboard. So there's a sound that makes yeah, it got a bit irritating in the morning when I'm working at a previous company, but everyone seems to love it. It has this very interesting tactile feedback. Gordon has passed me his previous MacBook. His previous MacBook has a much more conventional keyboard, and this butterfly keyboard is probably included on the newer models. It takes a while to get used to, and it may not appeal to everyone. And it's also quite a bit of feedback. So we have two on the sides, two Thunderbolt 3 port. Thunderbolt 3, very, very awesome. The model, the fastest connector you can have on the market. It offered to move things at 40. GBP as well. Yeah, so the Thunderbolt 3 is also used one uh, as a charging point for a MacBook, two as a connector to other screens. I read that you can go up to 6K resolution on a separate screen and also used to send your documents over. But the thing is that because it only has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, there is no USB 3, there is no USB 2. So if you require USB 2 or 3, you are required to buy a separate adapter to connect your USB C or Thunderbolt 3 to your USB 3 or USB 2. And impressive, they still managed to squeeze in a 3.5 mm jack on the right hand side for your headphones and devices that require 3.5 mm jack. Going on to the UI, everyone's saying that Mac OS is just awesome, and I do agree with it. Everything's just there, everything's just clean. When it came in, the first thing you will see is the hard drive. Now, all the apps are on the taskbar, the search functions are on top, and series on top. So everything just feels very clean. So only recently, Windows 10, and you try to integrate this, everything is much cleaner. So it all started when Windows came out with the app style Windows of the OS and Windows 10 is the much newer device version of that but I think you cannot compare to the Mac OS because everything is just there it's a very simple find you need something you just press the search function type the keyword and it's there it's just a minor grievance for the Windows you have to click start you have to click search just to look for a thing oh yeah it's one thing also when you first turn on your Mac you require the key and the password and after that subsequently if you were able to come back and it locks off you can just use the uh, fingerprint scan to activate your MacBook again. So I think the fingerprint scanner on a MacBook is just very awesome. It reads very fast, it activates very fast,
fast, very seamless. I've been hearing a lot of things about the previous Windows laptop where sometimes the fingerprint scanner just doesn't work very well. I could be wrong. The new Windows laptops will work much better, but having a very seamless fingerprint scan is just very fast. You can just scan and just go to the moment very, very fast. Back to the UI, I have seen so many apps, but I have not touched most of them yet. I have only used a bit of FaceTime, a lot of Zoom, the hard drive, the documents, and Chrome, of course. There are a lot of things I see like maps, notes, you know, I have not been using them yet, but coming from the, the Apple build, I'm sure they must have reason to put all these apps inside. They know that you will use it eventually, or not use it at all. <laughs> Another thing is pretty cool is that they have Siri integrated in the Mac. Probably like lost here or something like that, but it's really awesome to see a full assistant inside your laptop. I'm not sure if there is a Windows version of an assistant or a Microsoft Alexa or something inside uh, Windows laptops, but if you know, let me know in the comments which Windows models these days have an uh, integrated assistant. So the sudden like change I need to adopt to using a Mac. So one thing, of course, I have to get used to the trackpad on a Mac. So the Windows trackpad basically this is one square here and sometimes there are two buttons on the bottom of the trackpad. So on the Windows trackpad, the whole trackpad is just meant to scroll. And the two trackpads, one is for clicking and one is to open the menu. It's only on the Mac I realized that there are specific spots that are used to, for example, scroll, touch windows, to move windows around. And there's things so called hot spots or something like that. Each spot on the trackpad entice some specific functions that you want on the trackpad. And also I have to Google to find out how to open up the right hand menu. So I just found out that you have to use two fingers to open up that menu and also to zoom in and to zoom out. Another thing is that I also have to Google how do you copy and paste on the MacBook. And Windows, when you want to copy and paste, you just use Ctrl C and Ctrl V. But on the MacBook, this is called Command C and Command V. I'm not so sure what is the purpose of having the control on the MacBook when there's a control and a command. But yeah, if you guys also know, let me know in the comment section below. Sometimes I like to take screenshots of pictures or video. On a typical Windows, you can just press print screen and you can just copy the image straight to your editor, such as Paint or Photoshop, but on a MacBook and Google it is Command Shift 3. And also there's an issue where I may be doing wrong, but the screenshot just goes to your desktop. Maybe there is a function where you can direct that screenshot and hold it first before you open up in a separate editor. That is something I'm not used to yet. Okay, so moving documents around is pretty similar to the Windows OS. You have a document folder, you can drag or drop your documents easily. And if you want to rename your document, then tap on each file and you can click on the center to rename document. But likewise, you're gonna copy and paste, you have to right click the file first or use Command C and Command B to copy and paste the file. If you were worried that there will be a drastic difference, don't worry, it will be transit over to using Mac OS for this feature. Another cool feature that I see is Photo Booth. So FaceTime is the program that works in the webcam and the Photo Booth is like capture your face off. And so basically what you can do is that when you want to do, for example, presentations, you can have your presentation screen and your face at the same time. It's really awesome like they're doing a live stream. I think it's a new app on the latest versions of it. Not so sure if you have to download it for the older versions, but it's definitely included in these newer models. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I'm currently running Catalina. When it came, I think it was running High Sierra. I heard Catalina runs a lot better on the newer MacBook. So yeah, if you're using a newer MacBook like mine, make sure to use Catalina. So yeah, as mentioned, I've been using the MacBook for just very simple web, web surfing, everyday use, but I have not touched video editing on this MacBook because I have this machine. <laughs> to do all my video editing and rendering tasks. I'm not so sure if I were to do a video edit on MacBook because of the specs that it comes with. There is no way for you to compete between the specs of this machine and the Mac OS because of one, the price. And I've seen so far, usually the parts that Apple chooses for the Mac is just, I don't know how to explain it. It's just doesn't uh, make sense. The 2020 and the MacBook still contains the uh, 3 RAM and 1.6 gigahertz of core clock for the CPU. Is there a reason why Mac doesn't want to upgrade the DDR4, why can't it have minimum of 3 or 5 gigahertz to 4 gigahertz on the Mac devices? I don't know, they want people to keep buying and I don't think I can fathom the idea of using a MacBook to video edit, especially if I want to pay hefty price for uh, iMac. An iMac costs at least $6,000 and it, I bought this guy for $1,000, which much, much better specs. But that said, there are a lot of designers and a lot of video editors out there who just love video editing on their Mac devices. Maybe for one, it looks cool, it looks professional, like oh people know that yeah you're using a mac to do your video editing you feel like wow yeah I'll probably we give it a try maybe like final cut on the mac os to edit some videos but as of now i'm very very happy to just do my editing on premiere pro on this machine yes well i'm only 
one week into using a MacBook, so I would not say I know a lot of MacBook. So this preview may seem a bit little, but this is what I've seen so far in one week of using a MacBook. I understand why people love it, why people are so crazy about using it because yeah, everything is just so clean, so nice to use. As similar to using an iPhone, everything is just very tidy, not cluttered. You can even tag your documents with color codes. Like wow! <laughs> now I understand why it's difficult for a Mac user to go back to Windows because everything is just so seamless. And Windows just needs more work. And I would say the comparison between the Windows and the Mac OS is just getting closer and closer because the Windows 10, it just feels very good to use as well. Anything is just more seamless now Windows 10, you can categorize nicely. It looks much, much cleaner. They remove a lot of unwanted apps, unwanted functions. It doesn't throw everything in your face that you used to. Yeah, maybe this time old Mac OS will feel threatened because Windows is getting better and better. Like I mentioned also, you will not need to fork out so much money on a higher editing machine because a Windows machine, if this is just called to download, I can easily upgrade, I can put in a new CPU, I can put in a new GPU, I don't have to spend so much. As compared to the iMac, you probably have to bring the entire Mac Pro iMac back to the distributor or Mac itself just to upgrade. Because I'll continue to use this MacBook, I paid for it, and I'll probably not buy a Windows laptop. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Yeah, check out my previous video. If you like me, if you don't like the webcam footage that you see on a MacBook, you can definitely get a PC for 900 US dollars, which is around 1300 dollars for your professional work needs or you're working at home you want better footage just get a separate webcam for it click on the eye icon to subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to know when i put new videos so the next video i may do is comparison video between Gordon's macbook and my macbook make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any videos so this is Fimantan out